<laughs> Hello, everyone. We're going to get started in just a few moments. Thank you so much for joining us. We just want to wait to ensure everyone has an opportunity to join. I love it. <laughs> And it's Thursday, Lisey, I had it to think is. about what day it was. <laughs> it is Thursday, right? Thankful Thursday. I see those numbers going up. I'm excited. You know, the anticipation has really been there for you, Lisey. Um, <laughs> everyone was ready for you on Tuesday. And we had that little te technology glitch. And now we are here and ready to roll. And it's just going to be a jam-packed hour. I'm so excited. Oh, gosh, I'm so excited, too. You know, uh, we're going to have some fun for sure. Kind of get people going, the excitement. Yes. Utilize that chat box. I'm all about the <laughs> chat box. <laughs> yes, yes. If you're joining, go ahead and say hello in the chat box. Let us know you're here. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I also love to see emojis. What's your favorite emoji, right? Are you, are we smiling? I hope to see a lot of smiles. That's what it's all about. <laughs> My two favorite emojis are always the side, um, uh, the side, like l crying, but you're laughing so hard that you're crying. Love that yes. one. Not the straight <laughs> one, but the side one. Um, the other one that um, I really love is like with the smiley and like you can tell they're giggling and they have their hands oh, in yeah. front. And I love that one too, because it's sort of like, I'm not going to say anything, but it's funny. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. Hello, hello. Oh my God, I saw a Texas. hi from DFW, Texas. Woo -woo. Sorry, I love everyone, but you know, got to raise a hand. We got some Florida in the house. Wow, this is exciting. Georgia, Ohio. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm in Virginia. So we, we're covering quite a bit of territory here. That is so okay. exciting. <laughs> well, if you're ready, Lisey, I think we should just dive right into today's presentation. We have so much to cover within the time frame allotted. So I am excited to, to just go right in. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, The Art of Onboarding, Building Strong Foundations for Employee Success. Transform your new hires into rock star employees with these proven onboarding strategies. My name is Stephanie Anderson. I'm the Senior Director of Communications and Social Media right here at Grace Hill. I've been proudly serving the apartment industry for the past 17 years. And as many of you know, onboarding is very near and dear to my heart. It is a passion of mine since I started in multifamily. And it's actually where I gained my my first corporate role as an onboarding specialist. Many people do not know that. So that is today's fun fact for you. That was back in 2013, which feels like a very long time ago. And um, so, yes, I'm very excited about today's topic. All of this to say that today's webinar is extremely informative and very relevant to today's landscape. I want to personally thank everyone for joining us. I want to extend a special welcome to all of our Grace Hill, Ellis, and Edge to Learn customers. Today's webinar will discuss effective onboarding strategies that you can use, and I guarantee Lisi is going to leave you with some great takeaways ways for you to implement within your organization. But before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Today's webinar will be recorded for all attendees, and you will receive it later this week. As an attendee, you will be in listen-only mode. That's going to help uh, to prevent any distractions and so that everyone can hear clearly. Um, and, you know, also keep in mind, we want you to engage. This is an uh, opportunity for you to interact with Lisi, not just for the Q&A at the end, but also throughout today's presentation. So I'm going to invite you to use the chat box that many of you are already using. And you can also use the Q&A box when you have a specified question you'd like for us to call out either during the presentation or at the end. So now for the good stuff. We've gone through all of the prerequisites of today, and I am absolutely thrilled to formally introduce today's speaker. As a national speaker, Lisey Daniels has dedicated over 16 years to the multifamily industry. Lisey has excelled as a leader supporting teams and driving talent development. With expertise 
Excellence in Leadership Development, Training, and Performance Evaluation. She is committed to helping individuals thrive in their roles. Lisey's deep love for education and mentoring is evident in her volunteer work with the Apartment Association of Greater Dallas and the Tarrant County, where she contributes to the Education Committee and serves on the NAAEI faculty. I will say from a personal perspective, I have shared the stage with Lisey, so she is one of the best in the business, and I've also experienced learning from her as a learner uh, when she is presenting. She also served as a Grace Hill customer for many, many years and was most recently part of our advisory council here at Grace Hill. So very exciting stuff. I am absolutely thrilled to have her here. Please help me welcome to our virtual stage, Lisey Daniels. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Oh, I am so excited to be here. And like I call it, drop some nuggets, right? Some insights on just how to have a strong foundation for employee success, right? The art of onboarding. And to be able to have this platform and speak on that is oh, truly exciting. So if you're excited, then I'm excited and I'm ready to get started. Stephanie, you ready to get started? I'm ready. All right, let's go. All right. So I always like to start this off and say in sales, first impressions are everything, right? But then onboarding is no exception. As an employee's first date, we have to set that tone for their career within your company that you represent and that company culture. We want to create that positive first impression. Companies, I truly believe, have to have an effective onboarding strategy, which provides new employees with necessary tools and resources from, guess what, from day one. And also, you should be able to introduce your new employees with your company's missions, your visions, your values, but also setting up that clear understanding of what your organization is um, structure is and what it's all about um, for your employees to have and become high performing um, assets to your team and ultimately grow and be very successful. And that's why it's so important for me for this and, and throughout the years of learning. So in the chat, I'm going to go ahead and throw out a question for you guys. And Stephanie is going to help me guide that. OK, have you ever started a new job and felt overwhelmed Okay, or lost during your first week? I know I have. It can be very stressful experience, right? And that's why I say onboarding is so essential. So if you have, put it in the, the, the chat box and then we'll kind of go back to that. So why should we start now? Well, effective onboarding, again, sets the tone for the rest of your employees' experience within the company. I love this quote by Andrew Graham. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. First impressions count. With every new encounter, you are being evaluated, right? Studies have shown that that person forms their first impression of another individual between seven seconds and two minutes. Remember how I went back and said, just how important is it, in, it, it is in sales, why wouldn't it be that just important when it comes to onboarding and taking our new employee through the steps to be very successful? They have already had that first impression of what your company is about. So let's continue to make it a very great one as that. It shows that you, the company values your new hires, right? It's invested in their success. And you can promote and create something very fun within that. I remember with one of my companies, we did um, interviews with our employees of what made our company so special or what was one thing about the company that was that experience that they enjoyed. And then we played that back. And then I did a training on that on top of that. And what happens is it showed new employees the excitement of that company. It talked about the organization of that company on their structure. We talked about the creativity, but it really showed that sense of community of what that company um, has. Also, you can include your DEI if you have a DEI program. This also helps new hires that are invested in their success be able to see that you are welcoming and you have an inclusive workplace culture. So if you do have that program, incorporate that some way into your onboarding strategy so that you can make everyone feel welcome. And when you have this, it becomes a very smooth and effective um, onboarding, which leads to, we all want, right, higher retention rates, better productivity, and of course, a positive company culture. 
And at the end of the day, you are then awarded or you're then known as that top company. Again, I always feel like when you have these effective tools, what you're doing is you are, as you see, it's displaying the value of that. It's promoting the engagement that you want your employees to have, the excitement that they're coming to work every single day, but you are putting back the the information, the tools, the resources, everything with them that we're going to be talking about today. And then again, it promotes that positive culture, right? That's every day this employee is coming to work, that they're excited about their team. They're excited about their company. They're excited about the things that you're putting forth to them. But you're also showing that you value them, that that's why they are a part of that. And it's not like you're just hiring them on board, providing them new hire paperwork and be like, all right, there's that empty seat, fill it, go about your ways. No, we're putting back into them at the same time. Stephanie, did we get any questions about any answers regarding that? Um, how they felt overwhelmed during their first week or started or had that experience? Well, I will have to say that unanimously across the board, we were getting all yeses and quite a <laughs> bit of them too. So I definitely think it's relatable. I did want to point out, Marissa says you learn to try and be resourceful really fast in those types of situations, which I'm sure you'll agree. And the you other do. thing I'll mention is Stephanie says, yes, would have been nice to have a buddy slash mentor. Yes, yes. And I'm going to get into that. You hit it right on the nail because I think that's someone that can help you set yourself up as well. But you have that person that you can confide in and help you grow too. So onboarding by the numbers, I'm really big when it comes to just stats and letting you see when it comes without and with a successful onboarding program. Did you know, and one thing that really sticks out with me is 20% of employees turnover happens in the first six weeks. Wow. That's really quick. And as leaders in our organization, we have to really step that up and say, are we providing our new employees with the success, the tools, the um, open feedback, the expectation alignment when it comes to them coming on board? Because again, we're so excited to get hired on and be a part of your company. But at the end of the day, now we're excited that we need you from day one until we transition to the place where we feel more comfortable, then turn around and then have to be able to do that with someone else, right? Um, so think about that. Replacing lost executive costs, the business up to 213%. Woo, those are some high numbers. But with a successful onboarding program, look at this. 58% of employees are more likely to stay for more than three years. Now that is good, right? That's exciting. That's because you're providing the tools and doing that. And so as we sit there and continue to talk about how to create that positive first impression, right? It is about that warm welcome. I remember being on site as a leasing professional. Woo, we're going to talk about time frame because, you know, um, and at that time I had a, a leader assign me to a peer, just like it was mentioned earlier, having a peer to peer or a mentor. If you don't have a mentor program, that's okay. Set up and have a peer to peer or someone that has experience or been with the company a while to help that new hire through their first 30, 60, 90 days. But I remember I had a peer that um, guided me through that onboarding process, right? Helped me be there to where I didn't feel like I didn't, I couldn't ask questions or they showed me, they sat there and they were, they listened, they helped me through that. And if you have a mentorship program, that's even better, right? That's something that it goes through the channels where that mentor is going to be there with you for the first 96 months. And if you're really lucky, they're going to be there with you for the remaining of your career because that's how you set and build those relationships with that. But as I go back in that, that was one thing that stood with me when it came to me being um, of that positive first impression and having that. And I was a leasing agent over 17 years ago. That's a long time. So again, things have changed and evolved so much since then. But you want to make sure that also you provide that warm welcome and introduce with your team members, right? It's not just them coming on board. It's them and having that welcome um, video or welcome announcement or recognition of a new employee and the excitement. But it's the team affair, right? After you get through that, the onboarding paperwork that is very important, but at the same time, Give them that office tour. Let them feel like, oh, this is my new community. This is the place I'm going to work with. These are my, my peers that I'm going to work with. I'm excited. But also making sure as a leader, we are giving them a clear, concise job description when it comes to their expectations. 
right? Um, their goals, their anything that's aligned, have those conversations from day one, because what you're doing is you're setting up that success continuously. And it's not saying, okay, you're hired. Here's the keys. Good luck. All right. I'll talk to you later. And they're sitting in that seat. That's setting them up for failure. And we definitely don't want to do that. So you want to offer that again, assign that mentor, give them the onboarding process checklist, however you have it set in place to be able to answer those questions and have that buddy to lean on to be able to walk through um, all the new tech, the systems you have or everything. You've hired them for their skill set. You hired them on for a reason. Now they got to learn your culture and your company and all the tools that you utilize. But also you want to make sure that you're emphasizing on that commitment, right, of that employee's development. You want to make sure the growth, the work-life balance, right? All of those are set up in that first week, first, second week, third week, when it comes to your new employee um, and letting them know that, yeah, you got hired on to this great company in this organization and everything that we provide. Now, let me tell you more about us, right? And how is that? And, and what we can do to even, you know, grow and build and develop you from where you're at. So if you have a leasing consultant and then they grow to the next position, assistant and a manager and so forth. So encourage that open communication because I think it's so important when you do that, but you're allowing that time frame to where you are fostering that um, open door, but that collaboration. And it really does start at number one. I'm at number one, day one, but you're also building that team building, right? You're, you're welcoming all your new employees to be where they're like excited that this new person is coming on board to help grow your business ultimately. And even if you're in leadership positions, that's the next leader up in the organization. I think it's so important to wrap your hand and provide that. And so that's why I I feel when you have that positive first impression, it's so mandatory because it can make or break you. Just like we train ourselves with sales. Again, it's still the same process. You're continuously trying to grow and keep your employees so your retention rates can be lower and they want to stay with you for longevity at the same time. But you're creating them for their growth, too. So with that, um, you want to provide them their resources, right? And what does the resources look like? You know, that's all your different types of tools that you have. I, you know, if you think about it, I remember being on site, like learning new programs, right? Or your new lead management system or property management systems, or just navigating how to go through your learning management system, right? You need to be able to have someone be able to walk you through that, provide clear instructions or, you know, detail. And that's where that peer-to-peer -peer, that mentor comes into play with you that can help you um, give you the necessary tools to perform your job you cannot set your employee up for success and be able to run something if we're not providing them with all the necessary um, information tools that they have or they need um, within your equipment, right? we got to make sure everything works. And that's just like, again, I, I hate to always go back to how you utilize when new move-ins come in. we got to make sure everything's set up and ready for a new move-in, but it's the same for our employees. we got to make sure that we have them set up, right? And be ready to go on that first day. So Again, introduce your team to relevant, again, team members and stakeholders and make sure that you're providing them with everything. You know, people like to see who the people are in their company and that's that organization chart. And what does that look like? Right. We had where I was used to the. Um, our jostle where it had all of our organization and you can see who our top players are or who are er everyone was in our company who you can go and meet and who you can go um, introduce yourself but it gives you a clear vision of everyone from top to bottom and bottom to up so again provide that information um, and kind of talk through the company of that um, i also feel that it's the who's who of your company too. And I like Jostle because Jostle is a really good tool that we utilize when it came to our company organization. But it was also one of those tools that you, I say it was like a Facebook for your company's internet where you can be able to collaborate, meet, talk, and also um, be involved with everyone in your organization at the same time. But then again, goes into ensuring that you have access. This is all your resources, right? So ensure you have access to your essential companies, policies and, and safety guidelines, making sure your team, your new team 
uh, member is it has those um, resources and knows where to find them, knows where to locate them to where then they can be set up. And then you know that there's not going to be any expectation or any situation where they're not going to feel like I don't know where anything is at. Again, your ultimate goal is to provide that that setup for them and that positive first impression as well. And what's very important is the feedback, right? So establish those regular check-ins that I'm going to talk about too down the line. And check-ins is not six months. It's not within a year. Check-ins is maybe after your first 24 hours within the come. How are you doing? Are you good? Is there anything I can help you with? Is there anything your peer is working with you on or your mentor is working with you on? It's that peer-to-peer. -peer. It's that it's those check-ins with the leader and a new hire to where they feel value, but they feel like, oh my God, I'm excited. I still have a, a great leader. And we all remember our great leaders that it has been there with us and, and shown us and peers or mentors that helps guide us through our uh, first day and on. It, again, it's an exciting moment. So why would we not want to set that excitement up? for our new hires to be the best that they can be, right? Anything in the chat, any questions before I can go on, Stephanie? I wanna just kind of make sure. There is a lot going on in the chat, but all good stuff. We've actually received a couple of questions. Do you wanna dig in now? Yeah, we can. I can answer um, a couple and then I'll continue to go on. I just want to make sure I'm still there in tune. Yeah, they are here. So Allie would like to know, can you share with us whether those numbers are all industries or just multifamily? And I believe that is referring to one of the first slides you went over with the data. Yes. Yeah, so that is multifamily. Great question. Great. Now, Alicia would like to know, how can you ensure that employees are utilizing the tools after they have been given access and guides? That's another great question. That's where I think the peer to peer and the mentor comes into place and making sure we do those check in follow ups, right? Making sure our employees have and are comfortable with the tools, that they don't have any questions and that they are open to come and talk to us about it without having to feel like, oh, my gosh, I shouldn't say or ask those questions because I'm new to this. So I think open communication is very important. Awesome. Well, we're ready to keep going. OK. Keep them coming. Employee engagement. Oh my gosh, this is the part. You've you had that whole process of creating that positive first impression. You had that where you're providing the necessary tools and the resources and the things that is going to be very important for it for your team members to stay. But that's where you get the committed. Um, on the employee engagement, right? This is according to a study by Glassdoor, companies with a robust, and this is back in 2021, um, onboarding process improved new hire retention by 82% and product productivity by over 70%. That's really good. So again, the, the numbers are there. The facts are there. It's the fact that we have to continue to grow and build that for our employ our new hires as well. So engage your employees are most likely to be productive. They're most likely to be committed um, and motivated to succeed. If you have that foster of that engagement from day one of them coming on board and showing them that and having that clear understanding of what your company goals are, their values and expectation. It's like sitting down at that day one and having that conversation. So it's like, okay, this is the expectations for the first 30 days. How are we going to align that? I want to make sure we have that open conversation. And you'd be surprised the productivity of what that employee is going to come back and give you and have that when you have those open, um, where you provide that open feedback for them, right? Um, new hires who feel supported, I always say, value during that onboarding program, right? That's where they're going to feel like you are now invested in their success. It's not just hiring an, an employee for an empty seat, right? It's now in hiring an employee because you value them and now you want to see their success which leads to a higher retention which we're ultimately looking for right and lower turnover cost at the same time so when you build those relationships from the day one and you are providing that positive um uh, teamwork and that sense of community with your employees, you're going to ultimately get back what you put in. They're going to come to work excited. They're going to come in and do the work. They're going to come in and have a place where they feel that ultimate excitement of being a part of your company. And that's 
our number one goal is to have that, right? That positivity, right? And so you want to emphasize again on your company's commitment to your employee, right? The, the, the commitment of what you're going to work with them through their process for their development, their growth, the work-life balance in that as well. Um, I mean, especially with everything that's going on, you want to make sure that you are focused on that with your team member and the new hire. You know, they've done the research of why they're coming committed to you as a company. We have to also do our part too as an employer for them. Um, but when you do that and have those processes and those expectations and you're aligning that and you're and you're letting your your employee know about that commitment, they're likely to feel that their um, their professional goals align with you. Right. Um, their company goals, the missions, the value, the visions, not the value, the vision and leading to increased job satisfaction ultimately is your employee engagement that we are looking to see. But that also means that they feel heard. OK, and they feel that they are a part of you and your team, you and your organization, you and them, and which gives them that motivation for engagement to come in and do the work. And they want to stay long term. And I know in the chat, how many of you guys you just love overall the experience you have within your company that you ultimately come and you're like, you know what? I want to go above and beyond. I want to work and do this longer and I want to grow with that. That's all committed into that employee engagement starting. Guess what? from day one. And we have to continue to evolve and continue to grow that. Um, nothing's never like plateau. It's always forever changing. And ultimately, that's where, we're, um, where you'll get that commitment at the same time. Okay, so now we're going to go beyond day one, right? So you, and when I mean beyond day one, I mean, like I've already set that tone for it and your expectations, it's about having that 90 day plan. And what does that look like with you and your employee? You know, when you have that scheduled training, right, the cycle, you know, they have their compliance training, they have the things they got to take care of. But now it's like, okay, you're, you're past that 90 days, right? You, you've gotten to where you know a little bit about your job, your, your, your expectations, you're feeling a little bit more com comfortable. I'm excited. You're excited. Your peers with you. And now it's time for me to say, okay, let's do some of those check-ins, right? Don't wait until your yearly evaluation to check in with your employee. Do those check-ins. Yes, you may still have a peer or a mentor helping, but do those 30, 60, 90 day check-ins. You would be amazed at how that will make that individual feel when it comes to making sure that they're staying aligned with your goals. The last thing you want to be is at a yearly performance and they're like, well, your goals don't align or we have our expect expectation has not been set up in the right direction. So again, make sure that you're aligning that you're working with your team members and go a little bit be, um, beyond that. And so and, and, and practical strategies for that and in, in creating their their career growth development plan, right? Um, cross training, or maybe it's, you know, different departments, different roles. Again, this goes beyond that 90 day. This is going into that 60 month, that six month. This is going into that one year. This is where you're going to start seeing, okay, what is it that you're aiming? What is it that you want to grow and develop to? What is it that you want to take more on electives or more on network or going into associations and going to different classes and certifications? This is all where you're going going to start establish that come after that time frame of your 90 days and your six months. But it's also establishing your performance markers, right? Okay, so you're here, we're at six months, how are you feeling? What can we do? What is it that we both, you know, what that you need to work on, or how I can help you, or where I can take you to that next growth. And what now I have your coach, and you're continuously having that feedback, but that communication, I always say communication is so important. And it does, it's, it's a constant evolving circle, because that's what we're there for. We're there to help them grow. But we're also there for them to provide that, um, that, that fulfillment, that commitment that we want ultimately in your organization. And, and that's what you're investing in, right? That's where it's a little bit farther than just the higher on, see ya. No, it's higher on, I value you. I'm going to help you. We're going to get you to that next level. I'm going to grow. We're going to go to where, okay, where do you want to be at now? You know, we're at, we're at one year. What does your goals look like? How do you want to align that? What is your expectation of me? What is my expectation of you now? And then where can we set that? And that's where you put those performance markers. And that's where it goes to, okay, I want to get my certification. Great. Boom. Let's, let's look at how does that look like? Maybe it's additional training. Maybe it's shadowing or, or cross training on that sense. Again, 
Those are what happens when you are investing and you're providing that commitment as an organization with your new hire, but you're also making them feel like, wow, okay, I can see my longevity, but I can see my career growth. And it's the career triangle. It's that little up steps, right? And, and most important, you want to make sure that they feel like they can grow and not just stuck in one little area, right? Ultimately. And so that's why I say make sure you have those scheduled regular evaluations. It's so important when it comes with your, your new employees and um, your new team members. Okay, any other questions? Anything else? I'm still moving on. I just want to do a check-in. Okay, thanks for the check-in, Lisey. We do. We have more questions, which is great. Normally, we get on webinars, and people can be a little bit shy or timid about asking, but this crowd is phenomenal today. <laughs> they are really, really bringing in the tough questions for oh, us. Oh, God. Bring them at me. I love it. All right. <laughs> So question, how do we encourage direct leaders to be consistent and accountable with these check-ins and one-on-ones? Great question. Oh, wow. That is a really great question. I think the way you can hold, I think we have to hold ourselves accountable, but at the same time as leaders, we need to have that open communication and feedback. And you have to make sure that you are doing the work too with them at the end of the day and making sure that you are, um, it's almost like showing that example for that. And you don't want to lose that in the, um, at the end of the day, if that answers your questions. Great. Now we do have another question. Uh, let's see. Do you recommend having managers use a formal check-in form that they must share with HR? That's a great question, Gail. Wow, that is. Can you repeat it one more time, Stephanie? Sure. Do you recommend having managers use a formal check-in form? So oh. an actual paper or maybe even a digital and that they would share with HR each time? Yeah, I absolutely would recommend that. I think it will kind of keep things in a line, alignment, but also setting up that expectation. So I do definitely would agree with that. I like that. And then yes. lastly, um, Stephanie wanted to make note that something her HR department does is they schedule a check-in within two weeks to not just review benefits, but ask the important question, how's it going? Oh, that's the most important question. It's like, how are you doing? How's it going? And if there's anything I can do to help. And that's not just with HR. That should be with also within your team leads too. So I love that. That's a great point. And we have one final, one final thing that came in right there at the end. Um, Alicia, her company has that, but she also shares it with the training department for future check-ins. Ooh, I think you should incorporate. I don't think it should always be about HR. I think it's a training process as well. If HR and training is working together, I think training should do those check-ins at the 30, the 60, because there's so many tools and systems and things that we have a new hire having to learn that you're not going to gravitate or be able to expand that all in just 30 days or 60 days or 90 days. Sometimes it's the average just takes up to learning one's position of six months to a year. But then with all the new stuff that you have, so yeah, I definitely do believe if you have the bandwidth and the team members to do that in the training department, have that. I think it's very helpful for a new hire as well, because you're, you're ultimately there to help set them up for success. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. All right. You guys are coming at it. I love it. Um, this is, uh, you know, it's, it's important at the end of the day, you know, your onboard, if you don't have an onboarding program, it's not to where you can't develop something small and make it big and grow. But if you do always having to make sure that you are evolving with different changes and making sure you are incorporating everything when it comes to your organization, because ultimately it, you want everyone to see the vision, the vision of what your organization is and what they're aiming to on top of that. But every day that they're coming in and putting in the work, so they feel like I'm not just coming to work. I'm coming to work because I'm part of the bigger picture, right? The bigger impact. And that's what the, the whole onboarding strategy is and the whole process is, is taking that one day and developing the smaller systems to build to be bigger systems, but ultimately to provide that commitment so you can have lower um, costs when it comes to your retention and you're developing an individual to be the best that they can from the very first day when you provide that positive first impression and that overall 
overall um, engagement of your excitement, right? I, I can't go enough and say when I first, when I was doing videos for onboarding training, I love to see the smiles, the excitement of a new team member coming on board and being like, you know what? This is exciting. Wow. I didn't know about this with the company. Yeah, they did their research, but it's a little bit more, right? They had that face-to-face -face of someone really welcoming them in that sense. So, so going through these different strategies of why it's so important and creating that positive first impression and providing them with the tools for them to be set up. It's so important for that longevity and that employee engagement that you want to have and come back to at the end of the day. But it sets that foundation for success, which then can lead again to higher retention rates, better productivity within your employees. So then they don't feel like they're just coming and they're just another number, but they come in because they're valued, they feel welcome, they're part of this organization that's bigger and they can foreshadow and they see the impact that they can make, but it gives them that continuously long-term success for growth in the company, right? They can see, okay, I'm not going to be in my position like this forever. I can grow. I can take new different courses, different classes, and um, I can go out and network and I can get certified to even be better than my role and then continue from down the line. And that's what we ultimately want from our teams, but from ultimately from our new hires, but building that. And it starts with us, right? Us as our, as employers and us as organizations for everybody new that's coming on board within our company. So with that, I definitely want to leave this with you in the sense that the only thing worse than training employees and losing them is not training and keeping them. I'm a big Zig Ziglar fan, but it's the very most important thing that we have to kind of remember. It does start with us from the very beginning. And at the very end, we set that tone and you ultimately wanna make sure we have that positive tone. That's referrals, that's more people come to your organization, that promotes that longevity. And at the end of the day, that creates a, uh, a positive, healthy environment. And that, is it on that <laughs> oh Any my questions? goodness yeah well yes <laughs> we have more coming in which is oh, great wow. <laughs> okay but let's pause for just a moment yeah. so thank you so much for leading us through this important content in such a fun and engaging way uh you know i feel connected to you i'm sure our attendees do as well you have great energy you're putting off and just sharing so much knowledge now i want to tie that knowledge just a little bit to what we do at grace hill so before we dive into more of the q a because i promise we're going to get to that no. I just want to let our audience know that if your team is challenged with any of the topics that we've discussed today, our team at Grace Hill can help. We truly understand the trials and tribulations of onboarding and compliance, along with the excitement of things like diversity, career advancement, inclusion, and so much more. We offer training and policies on onboarding that will enhance programs that you already have in place, or if you haven't started yet, we can help you get started as well. With our industry-leading policy survey training and assessment solutions, you can proactively set the standard for your team and the industry, might I add, uh, while giving them professional development, which we know so many associates crave. So our experts are actually available today, right after today's webinar. They can set up a personalized demo and a consultation for you. So in order to do that, I would love to uh, kind of take a pulse of the room really quick. Um, if you are not a current client of Grace Hill and or you want a demo to learn more about a solution that you don't have because we offer comprehensive solution packages. So say you have training and you're interested in policy or you're interested in surveys or mystery shopping, we would love to help you with that. So what I want you to do is use that chat box for me. We have a special word for today to help us get to you as quickly as possible. The word is onboard. Hmm. Ooh. No surprises here on board. That's N O N B O A R D on board. And then once you do that, a member of our team will contact you shortly to help in any way. We're a brand new client and we're doing the setup now. Yay, Cindy. Well, welcome to Grace Hill. We are thrilled to have you. And of course, should you have any questions or concerns, our team is here to help you as well. 
Okay, one other thing I want to mention is we hope you're following us on social media because we have a big announcement coming next week. And if you follow us on social media, you'll be able to get that announcement before anyone else. So super excited about that. Stay tuned. Um, exciting week. Halloween next week, 1st of November, which really kicking off holiday season and big announcement from Grace Hill. So love, love, love all about that. But now it's time to focus back on Lisi because we must utilize the time to ask the yes. expert. So if you haven't done so already, I want to encourage you to either use the Q&A box or that chat box there on your screen. Go ahead and enter in any questions that you have for Lisi, and we would love to help you. So I want to go back up in the chat while we're allowing people a little bit of time to, to input things and um, just see some of the suggestions that were coming through in the chat because there's some great conversation happening. So I let's love go back it. To, to Brenda. Brenda had asked, in your opinion, Lisi, do new hires feel comfortable sharing truth when things are not going so well? Oh, that's a really great question. You know, I think new hires sometimes feel the overwhelmness and sometimes they may not feel um, open with that feedback because of their position. I think it starts with us as our as an, an organization or as leaders to make that welcoming feedback and conversation and open line of communication. Um, comfortable for them to be able to be honest so that and you can help them um, set up for that success. But I think it really starts with us and really seeing and asking the right questions. You just nailed it. Allie said the same thing. She said it's about <laughs> asking the right questions. I couldn't mm -hmm. agree more. Creating that safe space as to yes. as you say, Lisi, to, to really engage with them and get that truth. Yeah. Um, so Melinda would like to know, do you have any thoughts for field employees? So she's talking specifically about maintenance. So maintenance team, their onboarding seems to always be a little bit different. So any thoughts there or any advice you can give? No, you know, I mean, yes, not no, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I definitely, no. <laughs> some, I definitely can give you some thoughts. You know, with maintenance, it's always hard to get them on that right page to kind of get through the training, but maybe have it as a group training session. Maybe have it as come on board and let's talk it through or have your maintenance supervisor be very engaged with their team and your team and really develop an outline plan of how you can help them and let them see the bigger picture. I think when you get their buy-in from it and let them see that it is important, it is exciting, then you're going to get that where they're like, okay, I'm going to work towards it and have that buy-in. But I think, again, it goes back to starting us, starting off with us as leaders um, and letting them know, like, it's not something you have to do, but it's something that's going to help and, and be help you be more successful down the line. I think that's fantastic. You know, if you're in the chat, which we hope you are, there's a lot of great conversation for our attendees happening um, with some great advice coming from your peers, which I always think is one of the most beneficial parts of connecting on events and webinars as well. Yeah. Really people are doing. So um, we won't take up too much time to go through all of those, but I do encourage everyone to check out the chat if you can. Um, let's see. Let me look. I can I can pop over there. Um yeah, there's so much about onboarding and and knowing what everyone is doing. Um okay, so Valerie, she would like to or Valeria, Valeria. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I probably am not. So my apologies. Um, but she or he would like to know, what do you suggest is the best way to propose a new onboarding strategy Ooh. to your company? I like that. Thinking outside the box and actually putting something together. I think it's just starting, right? I think it's just building something and getting the buy-in from other team members, other managers, leaders who that um, want to see certain things incorporated or change and building that and then presenting that, right? And getting that buy-in from um, your peers at the same time. I think it starts with doing the research, knowing, you know, and then starting and starting out and then and starting those checklists, the outlines. I think early on, it was just a checklist, build that checklist even bigger. And then from that, build it even bigger than that. And you become and have a full strategy. I think it, um, it starts with key players, but it also starts with making sure, again, asking the right questions and just taking that step forward. You got this. Great advice. Michelle Wood would like to know, 
What automations are you using to help the onboarding process and tracking? Oh, that's another good one. I think there's so many different automation um, tools out there that you can utilize for tracking your onboarding from um, your HR Paycom or your um, Graysale, anything that's going to help you set the tone for that next. It just depends on what you're utilizing on site within your company. But yeah, definitely research out there and find because I know there's a lot out there that can be very helpful. And of course, there's lots of conversation in the chat about providing food, you know, making training fun, onboarding fun, donuts are mentioned. So now I'm hungry. <laughs> uh, I definitely saw the donuts for the maintenance. So <laughs> yes, I think food is something key to their stomach. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We'll keep this great conversation going. Oh, Rich says, make a note of this, Lisey. It's got to be Dunkin' Donuts, though. Ah, Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, I love that. I think anything to promote that, right? <laughs> and they'll have those meetings and say, hey, it is a training day. It's an onboarding day. It's, you know, welcome day. Have something and let them feel like they're part of that team. I think that's very important and not so much so quick to put them in front of a computer and do work, make them feel that value from day one. So um, Stephanie gave a suggestion that they use Clear Company for onboarding. I'm actually not familiar okay. with them. She right. says, in addition, they partner with our payroll service, which integrates most common information to reduce uh, repetition. So that's good to know. Um, Amanda says, I just um, did my first safety training seminar with the maintenance crew and brought donuts and coffee. Well, there you go, Amanda. You just won the day. <laughs> I love that, Amanda. That actually hits it right on the target. Our okay, Stacia said our company is spread across multiple states. How do we create an effective onboarding experience for all different role levels in a more heavy virtual environment? Oh my gosh, that's a good question. So at one of my previous companies, when I was talking about doing the onboarding um, training, we developed a class, we did videos, we did interviews, different team members, all levels. I was doing onboarding for VPs. That's kind of crazy funny, right? But what we did is we made it, to where we basically talked about the culture of the company, the values of the company, and brought in the fun side of it, but really kind of based on what your HR you have to do as far as your first day, and then just make sure that they knew what the organization was about, right? The you know the the who's who of the company. And just be natural, whatever it is, and train on that. And I think it was a peer-to-peer, a, a, -peer, a person to person like me, or, or just individual on a webinar and speaking and talking about that, that they saw that. And we had employees across all over. So again, I hope I answered that. I know I got back into the, the whole tune of going back down to memory lane of excitement for that. <laughs> No, I think that was great. And that kind of ties in a little bit to Melissa's question. Melissa Bell really wants to know any specific tips for onboarding remote employees, which is obviously very relevant given our current times. Yes, utilize your your webinars, your your virtual, but make it to where it's someone speaking, right? Have that person to where they can be like, hi, welcome on board. I'm excited you're part of our team. People need to see people, especially if you are remote, to where they can feel engaged and they can feel a part of that team, no matter if it is a 30-minute call or 30-minute um, you know, uh, class, whatever that you have set forth, let people see people because I think that's what promotes the engagement ultimately. Absolutely. Christy wants to know, can you give an example of what the fun side would be? I'm assuming when we talk about fun side of training. <laughs> <laughs> I think the fun side is just the engagement side of it, right? I think training is fun all the way around. And when I mean fun, I mean just within your company, like what do you guys do as community service? What perks your company has? The involvement, the, you know, your teams, what they do when it, it means to um, have and build that community within their team and team building, bonding, events, functions, um, anything of that. That's what I mean by fun side. That's the creative side of what your company culture is about. It's not all about come to work. It's just the culture side is what you're promoting and that excitement of that, of your organization. 
I mean, I couldn't agree more. And I think anytime you can incorporate other things that are fun for people. So we talked about food, but you know, swag, don't you want your employees to reap your company, right? Here we go. Yes, uh, hello. Give them great things that they can wear and utilize and that can show off your brand and they're proud to show it off. So I think that that's another great way to make it fun. Um, Nikki, Nick, I'm sorry, Nikki, I, I said Nick, Nick Belknap, he said, what about tips and ideas for culture building remotely? That's a really good one. And maybe sometimes that's something that you can align within your budget and, and say, okay, we're going to meet at a time frame. Um, you know, it's very different with each organization, or maybe it's getting on a zoom like this and having like, all right, it's team building. This is what we're going to do. Maybe come with different things to the uh, table ideas or, you know, goals, whatever it is that you guys want to share and talk about. Maybe it's just your highs and lows of the week, but what you're doing, you're promoting team building in existence, but you're on virtual and you're one-on-one, but at the same time, you're having fun with it. I love it. We're, we're hearing people talk about music. Music's a great way. Lisey, you and I, when everything went away on Tuesday, we listened to Taylor Swift to get ourselves back together. Oh, yes, um, yes. I love, you know, Montel uh, Jordan on here talking about this is how we do it. I mean, it's fun. I, I really feel like it's all about the environment that you set up and the engagement, the energy you put out, you're going to get back. Exactly. I totally agree with you 100%. You guys have such great questions, such great um, and, and engagement in itself that I am loving this. So yeah, um, thank you. <laughs> I do have a question. I want to go back up. I think we missed this one. Rich had a question that others are saying great questions. So let's touch on this. Thoughts on how company leaders can ensure that lower level leaders, so working supervisors as an example, have the bandwidth to support new hires? Mm. I think it really starts with making sure that within, a, or, you know, and I can only speak on that in, within an organization and making sure that you um you hire enough for each individual employee, especially making sure that. Let me rethink that question. <laughs> you want to make sure that you have enough staffing in place to be able to handle the bandwidth. And if you don't have the bandwidth, make sure you're bringing that up within your, your budgeting and making sure you are having that where you can add additional bodies for your team. And also making sure that, you know, you are not stretching the limits of your current employees at the same time. Yeah, I think that's a great point. You know, I think it's important to provide resources to employees. And when you have things like policies and training set in place, it makes it consistent for everyone. So then you allow your creative side to really add that flair, add something to it that makes it fun and engaging, but also making sure you're checking all those boxes, which is also important. I, I think that's a great exactly. question and a great answer. No, it, it's a very great question. Mindset is important as well. Understand that once you train that person up, they will be able to take the load off. And that goes back to that beginning, right? That peer to peer and cross training and leveling them up. So then that helps if you can't have the budget to hire on new individuals to be part of the team, but you have someone there to help out when it comes to your supporting departments, right? Your training departments or on that end, so. And you know, mindset, my mind always goes to, no pun intended, I want to invest, even if I'm super, super busy, I want to invest so good into new employees because when I want to use things like PTO or I have other priorities happening, they should be able to run the show. They should be able to do things. So I know it, it's hard, uh, especially when everybody's super busy, but when you view it as an investment through that mindset, it makes a huge difference. I love it. All right. Well, we are getting to the tail end here. So we'll give just one more moment for anybody to ask questions. But Lisi, if you want to go ahead and share your information, um, that way, if anyone has additional questions, wants to contact you, interested in any of your services, um, I want to make sure that they have the opportunity to do just that. 
Yeah, definitely. You can reach me on my website for any inquiries at lisedaniels.com. I'm also on LinkedIn, um, Lisey D. Social media handles at Lisey Daniels is my Instagram. Definitely, you guys um, connect. I can also help one on one, provide additional support, coaching, influence, you know, all the energy and excitement as well, too. So, um, again, thank you so much for this and being a part of this and utilizing that. And with my insights and having fun. <laughs> Yay, we're getting a lot of positive feedback. I think we'll take just one more question since it's in the chat, Lacey, if that's okay with you right before we end. What are some best practices for creating manager level onboarding checklist that these working supervisors can use and follow and hopefully help with some of that workload? Yeah, I think your checklist has to do with what your day to day operations and making sure that they align with your expectations. It's one thing to create a checklist and not have everything being aligned with what you're wanting to set your employee up. But then when you put these check these checklists in order, making sure that your managers understand the importance of it, making sure that they're following through with it, making sure you have key check ins with them to make sure that they're setting that tone with it as well, because we can set and provide all the forms need it down. But if we're not sitting there um, doing our check in with our leaders to make sure that they're filling if fulfilling that in their end, then that's on our end. So again, I think it goes back to making sure that we're not creating more work, but making sure that we're creating enough to where it does align to what we want them to succeed in. And it does, it starts with one. So again, don't overboard a checklist, make sure your checklist or something that stays in, um, in line with your expectation of your organization. Great information. Barbara said, great webinar. I've taken a lot of information that's very useful. That is that's exactly what our goal is. And so thank you so much for sharing that. Um, again, if you missed it at the beginning, we did record the webinar. We will be sharing it out for anyone who wasn't able to stay within its entirety. Or if you're like me and you get sidetracked and you're taking notes and then you know you missed a crucial piece of information, you'll be able to capture all of that uh, through the replay. So happy to share that in the days to come. Thank you. Well, Lisey, I tell you, this has been a fantastic hour. I am so grateful and appreciative of you agreeing to come and speak on our webinar at Grace Hill. And most importantly, just sharing all your knowledge. You have great experience on this topic as well as so many other topics. And you have really helped all of our attendees today to um, take some actionable takeaways. And I can't, I can't wait to see what they're going to do with the information that they learned. <laughs> Thank you again, Grace Hill, for having me. Thank you, everyone else. I've had fun. And um, yeah, go out there and be amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. Be awesome. Like I tell my kids every morning, be awesome. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for attending again today. And thank you, Lisey. And I hope everyone has a terrific Thursday. Bye-bye now.